You're watching Bread and Roses, a weekly political social magazine that's broadcast in English and Persian via New Channel TV. Hello everyone, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fari Bospuya. In this week's program, we'll be interviewing Annie Laurie Gayla on women's liberation from religion. We'll also be talking about secret deals between the UK government and the Saudis, Jill boobs and fatwas against them, a wonderful Syrian rock band uh, called State Bread that held an impromptu rock concert during flight, as well as some interesting news from Iran, including men standing up for women's equality and uh, the commuted death sentence of Sohail Arabi, Don't Go Away. Well, with news of the week that passed, we've got lots to talk about. One is about news that's come out regarding a vote trade between the UK government and the Saudis to get them both elected to the UN Human Rights Council. The relationship between government, it's, it's fine, but secret deals to get you, uh, you, um, Saudi Arabia on human rights, that's disgraceful. I mean, sometimes you, see, you hear uh, governments express concern about human rights. This seems to be just to keep the public sort of uh, busy and they carry on with the secret deals. So I think British government is complicit with the Saudi Arabia on violation of human rights. Yeah, and also there's other information uh, on how the uh, Foreign Office and Home Office have been working to help with Saudi's policing. I mean, helping with the policing of a um, repressive regime as, uh, as repressive as Saudi Arabia is atrocious and you know the good thing is that some of this relationship is being highlighted more and more and there's pressure on this uh, but again the the UK government has close relations with the Iranian regime yes. and that too is something that doesn't come under enough scrutiny. I think there's clearly there are a lot of deals, uh, secret deals, um, that they need to be exposed and effectively they maintain these dictatorial regimes. Yeah. Maybe if we've heard about the uh, news, I mean, the, on, on the other hand we have the pressure from within the Iranian society trying to um, you know, fight against the um, you know, dictatorial Islamic regime in Iran. Yeah, I mean the good news is there's this campaign um, where men are coming out and defending gender equality and it's in response to the husband of the women's Iranian football team because he refused to allow her to, she, she was the captain of the team, to go to Malaysia to play uh, and the team won actually there and so in response to the fact that he's allowed not to give her permission to travel, men have come out and said we give our wives permission to travel, we give them all their full rights back, even though the regime has taken it away from them. That's, you know, that's the pressure that it's working uh, and it's important to highlight these uh, situation that the, in, in the Iranian society there is a huge anti-government, anti-Islamic backlash in Iran and opposes all these changes. Yeah, and I think one of the other things which is thanks to pressure is that these death sentence of Sohail Arabi, uh, a young man in his 30s who was given the death penalty for insulting Muhammad Islam's prophet and insulting uh, the Iranian regime's supreme spiritual leader. His sentence has been commuted from the death penalty to uh, two years of theological study. He has to read 13 religious texts and report back to the regime on his uh, you know, on his understanding of those texts, but he still has a seven and a half year sentence for um, insulting Khamenei. Which is a crime in Iran to criticize the, the, um, the big dictator in Iran. Yeah. The Indonesian Ulama Council, which is the highest body of the top dog, Mullah, sitting there making rules on everybody, for everybody and everybody's lives, and of course, most often they're not for women, they're really angry, and it's because they're women who are wearing the scarf, the headscarf, which they call Jilbab there, but they're dressed, you know, with their body showing, wearing like tight-fitting clothes, person. like anybody else, and it's being dubbed Jilbub, and they are 
angry about it. They're really yeah. angry. And this is this is we're trying to sort of cover everybody in in Islamic dress, and people are resisting, and that's part of a resistance of young people. So they say, let's just go away. And social media is full of sort of photographs and sort of uh, short videos of young people who are, um, you know, not agreeing with the um, with the fatwa. Mm. And what's funny is that they've said that, oh, there's already a uh, fatwa against pornography, as if, you know, a woman who's not wearing a tent or a body bag is pornographic because they hate women's bodies so much. Uh, but they're saying that, and it's really good that you've elected to wear the jilbab, but don't be vulgar, you know. And it's interesting how for them, a woman's body is so vulgar, you know, it's complete vulgarity. So... I mean, this is the beginning of end of the Islamic dress. You know, these, you know they've, they're not respecting the complete cover and I think this is a beginning for um, you know to get rid of the whole thing yeah so Jill boobs are good but no Jill bobs are better than anything else and of course no ulama talking and issuing fatwas and you know making people's lives hell Khebez Dola, or State Bread, is a Syrian rock group and they were forced to flee Syria when their drummer was killed and when they said that there was no more place for music in Syria, a Syria that they say is controlled and run by war criminals. Now, in, in the process of their flight, they actually set up an impromptu rock concert and it is just, I mean, when I watch this, um, it's from Al Jazeera. It just made me have goosebumps all over. I mean, you you, you get those many times. Yeah, I know, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But I think this is this is the human face of the people fleeing war, mm. and you know, Islamist um, and the uh, and the um, Syrian government. The hell that has been created for them, and this is this shows the human face of the refugees and the reason why people are fleeing and you know you could see that and, and people need to recognize and, and support this. Yeah so watch this short video clip uh, from Al Jazeera on this, uh, this, this wonderful slice of life. Uh, really you're, it's just goosebump worthy completely. Five musicians, five Syrian musicians, we came uh, from a beautiful country uh, governed and controlled by war criminals. So it was surreal for us and for them, uh, and uh, we wanted to make it more surreal. So we we whipped out these copies of the CDs from the, the bags, and we we started distributing the CDs on the beach. We just bought a guitar in Athens to play on the on the road because we, we just basically we cannot uh, stay like more than three days without playing or that jamming. Yeah. 